So here we have the Proco Rat schematic. I grabbed this off of electrosmash.com, which is such a great website. This is this image is just from like an article where they go into great detail on this whole thing. And they, they pretty much any classic circuit, they have a really great article on with nice diagrams and stuff and equations that, yeah, electrosmash.com. Just go there. It's great. All right, let's start down here since I've already scribbled a little bit. Uh, this is just power filtering, this whole section. Um, basically, uh, all right, let me just say this diode is very common. A lot of people will use these as like a fuse kind of thing for uh, reverse power protection or overcharge protection kind of stuff. Uh, this is probably not best practice. You'll see it copied on a lot of other stuff, but you can find better ways of doing it. Don't copy it. Figure something better out. Uh, these two resistors, R11 and R12, form what's called a voltage divider. So this top node that I've circled is uh, 9 volts. This bottom one is 0 volts. And in the middle, that voltage is a ratio between these uh, two resistors, the, the value of those two. So the equation, well, the short version is if these two are of the same value, you're just splitting this voltage in half, right? So half of nine is four and a half volts. So that's what that is right there. Um, and we're using that so that uh, we can hit this, uh, these amps, right? This uh, uh, op amp can operate in that middle part of our, uh, we'll get into that later. Anyway, uh, just to give you the equation uh, for a uh, voltage divider, the voltage out, let me just check my notes so I don't get this confused with a different equation. Yeah, okay. Um, voltage out is R2 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage in. Right, and uh, R1 and R2, if you, you know, just <laughs> subtract 10 from both of these guys, right? R1 is the one on the positive voltage, R2 is the one down at the lower voltage. Um, yeah, so this will help you figure out, oh, and, uh, well, yeah, anyway. Uh, let's move on. We can go into more detail here, but we got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's move on. So, uh, that's our power stuff. Let's get into the actual circuit. Input right here, this is uh, biased to ground by this one mega ohm resistor. Uh, and then we have this little cap here. And now this also forms something of a, uh, which one is a high pass filter, right? So that means uh, very low frequencies and DC current or DC voltages as well uh, will not pass through this capacitor, right? So this is basically gonna oscillate at the speed of the audio that we put in here. And then any, you know, if, if you accidentally have like a extra volt on this input, this will remove that. And over here, you just have the audio left. Um, and there's also some filtering stuff going on, but maybe we, I could, I'm gonna give you the, the, the filtering equation later. Uh, yeah, this is another type of filter. This is a low pass filter. It's sort of the opposite. This is cutting out lows. This is cutting out highs. Yeah, just got to double check because those names feel backwards to me. Low pass is a high cut, actually. Anyway, let's talk about this op amp stage now. So, uh, this structure here is essentially an op amp in non-inverting amplifier configuration. So, the, uh, basic version of that uh, is you put your inputted audio into the non-inverting amp uh, and then you get this kind of stuff here. So there's a feedback resistance here. This is negative feedback. And then there will be uh, another resistor to ground. And I'm going to label this guy RG and this one's going to be RF for resistance to ground and uh, feedback. Um, yeah, and the gain equation for these guys is AV, that's the gain in voltage. Sometimes you'll see this also as GV, uh, is equal to uh, 1 plus RF over RG. Um, yeah, and this, uh, this gain is essentially um, how much you're going to multiply your inputted signals by, right? So if you input, you know, let's say two volts into here, and then your gain 
the equation works out to be like three, right? Uh, then you're gonna multiply two by three and you're gonna get uh, six volts on the output. So this is how you figure out how much it's gonna multiply the input. Now, uh, this guy has a lot of stuff going on that is not these two resistors, but it can be simplified down to that. So this cap is just dealing with stuff from the LM308, which is kind of a crummy op amp. Uh, we don't really need to deal with that. Uh, this also kind of, not specifically because of this op amp, a lot of op amps do this, but uh, this is to tamp down high frequency oscillation, which the rat is prone to. Um, yeah, so this is acting as a filter that just cuts out the very, very high stuff. Maybe even higher than human hearing. Uh, it would depend on the settings and stuff, but I think that's very high. Uh, you know, above 20 hertz, uh, or 20,000 hertz. Um, this is obviously our, our feedback. And then these two resistors going through these two capacitors to ground are going to be our RG. So basically, um, audio signals uh, doesn't mind that these guys block from the actual ground. Audio signals can still use this as ground, essentially. Um, there's some filtering stuff that goes on here, too. This shapes the base. Uh, but really what you want for this equation is to uh, calculate these two uh, guys in, in parallel, right? That's So uh, our, what would that be? RG would be... Uh, R4 in parallel with R5. Uh, and then you plug that number into there. But, you know, you don't really need to calculate that for this because it's going to change depending on uh, what you do with this pot anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the non-inverting amplifier. Moving on. So, boom, we got another cap that's acting as uh, a high pass filter, right? So that any kind of DC stuff from accidents or weirdness over here doesn't make it through. Audio passes through nicely. And then here we have the business section. Uh, these two diodes are what actually do the clipping. This is where the distortion happens. So uh, diodes are basically one way valves, right? Like this is only going to allow current to flow from zero up to from ground up to this node, right? Um, which is maybe confusing, but uh, you got to remember that because it's audio, it's swinging above and below whatever voltage is right here, which is going to be basically ground. So you can have negative voltages is really what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, the other thing about these guys is that they will not conduct that, even in that one-way valve... Uh, mode, they will not conduct unless you pass uh, some uh, a certain voltage threshold. So some people will say it's 0.6 volts, others will say 0.7 volts, so I always just sort of uh, round it and say that it's like 0 0.065 volts uh, that you need to actually pass through this guy. But what that means is that if you imagine your audio here, uh, I'm going to say this is 0 volts. Uh, and then we have our threshold for uh, the diode, right? Uh, th will only uh, will only conduct if you hit, you know, this is our 0 0.6. And then down here, because this guy's pointed in the other direction, uh, this is minus 0 0.06 volts. So as your audio comes in and is wiggling around, it will hit that threshold right here. And then all of the voltage that's above that threshold or below this one down here uh, will be sent through the diode to ground. So you end up with these chopped off waveforms where it wants to go past the threshold, but it cannot. The voltage will not go any higher because of these diodes. Uh, yeah, so that's how distortion works, <laughs> basically. Um, let me just clear all this stuff out again. Uh, yeah, and if you want to mod this stuff, by the way, this is an excellent place to start. Just try different diodes. There's so much character in different types of diodes, you know? Like the Turbo Rat, I believe, is basically the same schematic, but the only difference is that these are LEDs instead of the uh, 1914s. 
Um, yeah, because, you know, the D in LED stands for diode. It's a light-emitting diode, so it, that's how it works. It's still, still a diode. All right, now let's get to this bit right here. So uh, I'm just going to ignore some stuff that doesn't have a huge effect, and we're just going to pretend that there's only these three components right now. What this is is a low-pass filter, an RC low-pass filter. And they call it RC because it stands for resistor and capacitor. It's RC filter. Um, and this is our tone knob, right? So here's your potentiometer, and you're going to change the amount of resistance that this capacitor is seeing sort of above it right here. Uh, and that's going to create a sort of uh, slope that will cut off your um, high frequencies, right? If you imagine this is like an EQ slope. And then as you turn this knob, this uh, th there's a point right about there where you get a three decibel drop, right? And we call that the center frequency. And as you change the resistance here with this potentiometer, that point is gonna be moved to the left or right, you know, if, if this is all uh, frequency in hertz, right? You're gonna change the center frequency uh, of that cutoff. So if you if you bring it way down, you know, you can have a slope like that instead of over here. And if you uh, turn the knob all the way up, you'll have it, you know, above, above human hearing, uh, probably. Um, let me give you the equation for that bad boy. So if you wanna find the center frequency of a thing, uh, what you do is, first of all, you do this very fancy symbol, which is fun because it looks like some super advanced physics. Uh, and then we're going to go 1 over 2 pi, or uh, sometimes you'll see that written as tau uh, RC. Yeah. Uh, so because we have these two resistors in series, we're just going to add those together. So this is really, you know, this is going to be R7 plus... Uh, it'll be R7 plus uh, this is R tone, I guess, <laughs> whatever this label. So it'll be wherever this potentiometer is set. Let's just say 50k plus 100 and uh, yeah, 1.5k. And the reason that this ex exists at all is just so that um, you can't uh, bring this resistor all the way down to zero. So it's just lifting the uh, sort of minimum value of what this. Uh, filter can do, right? If you remove this, it'll totally still work the same because, you know, you'll just move where the, the uh, extreme knob turn ends, basically. Um, yeah, hope that was clear. Let's move on. Here we have another capacitor that's uh, acting as a high-pass filter. Uh, basically doesn't change anything in the audio spectrum. Um, it's just to block DC voltages and stuff. And then this whole uh, chunk, all of these parts, form uh, a JFET buffer. This is a J JFET right here, Q1. That's a, a, a special kind of transistor. Uh, and this is what we call a common source JFET amplifier. Um, source being, you know, there's uh, the source, the drain, and whatever. We don't need to get into this whole thing. If you wanna, if you wanna look it up. Common source JFET amplifier. There's plenty of great material out there. Uh, basically, it's just a clean amp. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I'd say mostly it's acting as a buffer. I think there's a little bit of gain. I haven't worked out the math here, but uh, really what it is is uh, it it's it's uh, just to isolate the output stage from this clipping and filtering stage. Um, because, you know, the impedance of the volume knob and your guitar stuff can, it can kind of mess with what's going on in here. So this is just to isolate this middle section where all the business is happening, uh, from your output. Uh, yeah. And then once we come out of that JFET buffer, um, we're hitting this capacitor, which is again, you know, a, a DC blocking high pass filter. We have a resistor, uh, I'm sorry, a voltage divider, right? This is our volume knob is a voltage divider, right? It's basically the same thing as this, but uh, in one 
package, right? Because you have a resistance from this node to this node, and then another resistance from this node to this node that is changed based on where you set the knob. So you can think of that as two resistors uh, going from your loudest audio <laughs> here. Uh, this is, I drew this really poorly, forgive me. Whatever, you get the idea. Uh, anyway, it goes from the loudest audio here, you got ground down there, and then this middle point is right there. It's our, it's, it's just the same as this, right? So if that voltage, uh, or if that uh, volume knob is dead center, you'll have 50K on either side. And uh, like we said earlier, uh, if these two are equivalent, you basically cut it in half, so this will be half as loud as up here. Or, you know, uh, let me just clear all this garbage. Boom. This node down here will be half as loud as this node up here. Uh, yeah, and then you have your output. Um, yeah. So there's some other stuff I probably should mention about concerns about input impedance and output impedance, but uh, I think we've done a good job here. That's how the RAT schematic works. That's how most distortions work, too. It's, uh, the, you know, the, the simplest version of a distortion pedal uh, basically looks like this, where you got your... Uh, 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 non-inverting amp, this is where you input, that's your in. Uh, sorry, this is a little messy. <laughs> but anyway, here's your RG, here's your R, oop, here's your RF, and then over here we'd have uh, some diodes to ground. And then... Uh, that's your output right there. This is the absolute simplest <laughs> distortion you can have, right? What is that? One, two, three, four, five components. Uh, this is this has some problems that you need to fix, which is why there's a lot more stuff here. But if you start here and then just mod, you know, probably put a capacitor there and a capacitor there and a tone knob and probably a cap here, and then you gotta uh, do some uh, uh, biasing. You know, anyway, uh, you can design your own distortion, right? Anyway, that's the rat. Yeah, congrats, you're smarter than you were five minutes ago. Or however, however long this was, probably longer than five minutes, I wasn't paying attention. Yep, have fun.